Inside of the first concentration camp Dachau, there were many executions and accounts of torture that took place. The site was barbaric, and it was where many SS guards learned how to become brutal and sadistic beasts. There were many torture methods there, such as the standing cells, oubliette-style torture dungeons, in which a prisoner would be locked in one position for sometimes days on end, without being able to sit down. There were also flogging posts, where prisoners would be strapped to, and they were whipped in public for breaking the camp's rules. Also, there were gallows, which were used with prisoners being executed on them, at roll call in front of thousands of others, and the point of this was to strike fear into the hearts of the other inmates. But there were many different people who were imprisoned at Dachau, from different countries, and one of those who succumbed to the camp's brutality in the final days of the Second World War was Giuseppe Girotti, an Italian priest who would be slaughtered in horrific fashion. He was one of thousands of victims of the camp who never made it out alive. Join us today as we look at the execution of the Italian priest of Dachau, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Giuseppe Girotti was born on the 19th of July 1905 in Alba, in Italy, and he was baptised at a few weeks old. As a young boy, he studied inside of Catholic schools, and in summer 1918, he would witness a priest giving a sermon in his local cathedral, and from this moment on, he realised he wanted to be a priest himself, and was captivated by this. Following the sermon, he spoke to the priest and said he wanted to join, and the priest convinced him this was the right way to go, and said that God had sent him to witness a sermon, and that he'd been called by God to be a priest. Because of this, Girotti then entered studies for the priesthood, and he studied inside a Dominican convent at the age of 13 and stayed there until he was 17. He then worked inside of different convents and other Catholic centres of worship, before he was ordained as a priest on the 3rd of August 1930 from the bishop of Agevno. Following this, Girotti continued to study religion and theology, and even as the Second World War broke out, he would be involved in this. He published many books and would write on different aspects of the Bible, and even worked as a professor of theology inside of a convent in Turin. But he would also help out at the local hospice to comfort those who were suffering near the end of their lives. However, in 1938 he left and then moved to the San Domenico convent in Turin. But at this time, Mussolini's fascist regime had been in power for some time, and he was making many enemies. Mussolini would at this time become very good friends with Adolf Hitler, and he would later ally his nation with the Nazis. Mussolini had been in power for over a decade following his march on Rome, and his fascist governments began to crack down on certain parts of society, but many people within the Catholic Church began to oppose the fascists, and one of the resistors was Father Giuseppe Girotti. He opposed the Italian involvement in the Second World War, and following the Nazi occupation of Italy in 1943, there was a huge amount of persecution targeted at Jewish people by the Nazis. This had been going on for some time, but it ramped up, and Girotti then took matters into his own hands, and he helped save Jewish victims by trying to get them to flee Italy. He worked to arrange safe houses and escape routes for them out of the country, and provided many with false papers in which they could use these to flee. He referred to the victims as the carriers of the word of God and his brothers, and he previously spent time in Jerusalem, and he knew a lot about their faith. He helped many people escape persecution and deportation to concentration camps, and many of these were rather senior and were well known inside of Turin. However, things would come crashing down for Giuseppe Girotti, as what he was doing was treason, and the Nazis would deem this as very serious, and something which someone could be punished by death for. Many people who helped those who the Nazis were persecuting would be executed in some of the most terrifying ways, including even the guillotine. But Girotti was caught helping a wounded Jewish resistance fighter get to a safe house, and he was arrested on the 29th of August 1944. He had been double-crossed, and Girotti was then seized by the Nazi authorities, and he was taken to a prison. Many tried to get his release, however he was moved to a prison in Milan, before being sent to another site. The final place where Father Girotti would be sent to was Dachau concentration camp. Dachau was opened on the 22nd of March 1933, and to begin with it held 200 prisoners sent from Stadelheim prison and Landsberg, and it was the first camp to hold inmates who were regarded as political prisoners. As time went on and the Nazi stranglehold over Germany increased, thousands more people were sent there, including those who were considered undesirable. As soon as the camp opened, there were deaths that occurred, 
and prisoners were being killed. The inmates were forced to conduct hard labour, and it became a place where many SS guards were trained before they were dispatched to other camps to work. The prisoner entrance was marked by the infamous phrase Arbeit Mac Fry, and the camp then became very overcrowded. It was a site which was synonymous with execution, as around 4,000 Soviet prisoners of war were executed there by the Commandant's Guard at the SS shooting range next to the camp, and execution of prisoners continued. Guards were known for their brutality, and they would beat and brutalise the inmates if they caught them not being productive enough. They would execute and slaughter with their bare hands. Executions also took place at roll call on gallows in front of the camp's inmates. They would strike terror into the hearts of the prisoners. There was also a women's camp that opened in August 1944, but as the Second World War turned against the Germans, the conditions at Dachau went downhill badly. The Germans started to move prisoners from concentration camps nearer the front lines to more centrally found camps, closer to the German heartlands, and with this thousands of prisoners were sent to Dachau. Because of this there were many typhus epidemics and other disease outbreaks which caused problems and there were poor sanitary conditions coupled with a lack of food and water. This led to many prisoners dying and it's believed that around 15,000 people died in the final six months of the war at Dachau and each day hundreds were succumbing to the conditions as well as those who were still being brought to the firing range to be executed. Dachau had a long history of imprisoning priests and a total of 2,720 clerics and priests were held there, and it became a focal point for church prisoners and priests who were being punished by the Nazi regime. The SS to begin with allowed a local priest to celebrate Mass on Sundays, but then this was discouraged. Clerical prisoners to begin with were held in the punishment blocks when they arrived, they would then be distributed amongst other blocks and barracks. But then other inmates of the church were transferred to Dachau, and they even managed to make a chapel there. It was called Our Lady of Dachau, and it was said, the patient work by clergy and lay people alike had in the end achieved a miracle. The chapel was 20 metres long and 9 wide and could hold around 800 people, but often more than a 1,000 crowded in. The walls were painted with light green crosses, alternating with lilies. Special care was taken over the decoration of the east end behind the altar. The windows had been made to look like stained glass, but in September 1941, when German clergy were separated from the others, the windows looking out of Block 28 were covered in a thick coat of white paint. Religious activity outside the chapel was banned, and the treatment of clergy was disturbing at Dachau. They were forced to work incredibly hard and had hardly any food, and many gave food away to others, as they wanted to help others live. Of the 2,720 priests who were sent to Dachau, over 1,000 were killed there. Father Giuseppe Girotti got to Dachau on the 9th of October 1944 and he was given the inmate number 113355. He was held inside of cabin or block 26 with other priests in a tiny space which was not suitable for the thousand other members of the clergy that were held there. He would become friends with a number of these men. However, in March 1945, Girotti began to suffer with some pain. He complained of soreness in his legs and these then swelled but over the next two weeks things got much worse, and his whole right side began to be very pained. Because of this, the SS guards took him to a medical centre inside of Dachau to be evaluated, however he would never make it out of the hospital alive. Girotti was diagnosed with suspected cancer, and he remained in the hospital over Easter 1945, but he would then be slaughtered by one of the nurses or doctors. The doctors would administer lethal injections of either phenol or other substances, but inside of the hospital in Dachau, Father Girotti was given a lethal injection of what's presumed to have been gasoline, and he was instantly executed. He was not cremated, but instead was buried inside of a mass grave outside of the camp's walls, and recorded on his bunk were the words, Here slept Saint Giuseppe Girotti. In the past decades there have been calls to make him a saint, and the Pope confirmed that he was killed in the hatred of the faith, and thus was a martyr. But the process for the formal beatification of Giuseppe Girotti is ongoing, and he will one day be made a saint for his actions in saving many people during the Holocaust. He was a remarkable man and a priest who tried his best to help others, and because of this, his story deserves to be well known and certainly not forgotten. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.